Welcome to part two of why I put a circular saw on my CNC machine. <laughs> so, also known as the lamp that I made with my circular saw on my CNC machine. So, if you haven't seen part one of how I got the saw, the saw attached to my CNC machine, I'm going to put a card right up in here and you can click on that and you can go back and watch part one and it'll show you kind of how I fabricated the bracket and things like that. So, anyway, let's get on with the lamp project right now. Let's go. I already knew my biggest challenge was going to be creating this flexible plywood lampshade. Starting out, all I had was concept sketches and a computer-controlled saw. I needed to come up with some sort of a way to simulate this in my CAD software and come up with machine paths. And from there, move on to some actual test cuts. My first tests were fairly successful. I still had a few issues to work through and some fixturing problems to solve, but I had enough information to move on to my final CAD work. The amount of flexibility in the plywood I was able to achieve is going to be perfect for my lamp design. Okay, well I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going over the 3D modeling, but CAD is a very important part of my process, and I just want to point out a few of the highlights. I use a lot of construction geometry, in addition to the sketches that I build a 3D model off of. In fact, you can see the two 44-inch diameter circles there that the shade is constructed from. The legs of this tripod base might look a little complicated, but they're actually just straight extrusions from a profile, and then I went ahead and narrowed the ends and kind of squeezed them down a bit. There's a quick tip here I'd like to pass on. We all know that router bits are round and they can't make square corners, so when doing these types of joints, you have to cut past the corner a little bit and it, it leaves a little notch, and some people call them dog bone corners. Well, I like to cut straight into the corner so that when the two pieces of wood overlap, that that little um, overcut doesn't show. Okay, well it's time to start cutting some wood. There's a couple of things I'd like to point out. This lampshade is a two-sided part, so I have to cut the first side and then flip it over and do the identical cuts on the back side. So I need to register it somehow. So what I decided to do was cut a couple of slots in the spoil board and put a couple of splines in to line it up. What you're looking at here are the vector curves that I'm going to build the tool paths from for the saw to follow. Because a circular saw blade is not one of my normal tools, I had to do my simulations with a quarter inch end mill. And that worked out great because my five blade DIY dado stack is a quarter of an inch wide. I don't use this beam compass very often, but for things like this, it sure does come in handy. Check the description down below for links to all my tools.
The lampshade frame is pretty simple. It only has five components. These parts are going to be made out of three quarter inch birch plywood. And I decided to go with an eighth inch router bit on this. And I use a technique here that uh, I want to explain it to you. So check this out. Because three quarters of an inch is a pretty deep cut for an eighth inch router bit, I'm going to use an offset profiling machine operation. So in essence, what it does is it makes the profiling cut slightly wider than the router bit itself. And that accomplishes a couple of things. It allows the chips to be evacuated better, which keeps the bit cooler. It also allows the cutter to only cut on one side of the groove at a time. Oh, and another thing I decided to do was to leave a little bit of material after those first cuts so I could go back with some finishing passes, giving myself a better surface and hopefully uh, reducing the amount of sanding time. Well, before I can do that, I have to take off the saw and put the router back on. But it's an easy swap because they use the same four bolts. Well, I'd like to share another tip with you guys. So often there's a need to drill a hole in the side of one of these profiles as a secondary operation. Well, there's a great way to mark the spot as you're cutting out the profile. Check this out. By putting a really tiny bump in the tool path, I already marked the center of my part with this little notch. <laughs> now I gotta be careful not to sand it away before I use it. Oh, I'd like to add to that tip that I gave you earlier about this type of joinery. It's really important to measure the actual material. Like for instance, this is called three quarter inch plywood, but it's not exactly three quarters of an inch. So if you use the actual measurement of it, you'll get a nice tight joint. Because this is such a good fit, I'm only gonna have to have glue and I'll do that off camera. I'm gonna use this small carpenter square to hold the frame vertical as I drill the hole right on my mark. The legs on this lamp might be my favorite part of this project. Nothing says mid-century modern quite like the boomerang form. The carbide end mills I'm using in this project are by Amana. They were provided to me by Tools Today. If you'd like to check out the specific part numbers, uh, links to the products, and also possibly some discount codes, check it out in the description down below. Hey, my robot automatically zeroes out the Z after a tool change. How about that? Oh, and I want to remind you guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And also, please leave me a comment or ask me a question. I love to communicate with the people that watch my videos. And also, if you're a subscriber, be sure to hit that bell button because my videos don't come out on a normal schedule. That way you'll get a notification when I have a new video out.
I'm not using wood glue. I'm using Total Boat Epoxy to put this together, but I did make space for some dowels. Oh, if you don't have a pair of snippers like these, your shop is just not complete. I've got a full list of my tools and supplies in the description below, so check that out. Okay, so my plan for gluing is to use Starbine Super Glue to hold the dowels in place, which I did also use the activator, I just didn't show it here, uh, to hold the dowels in place, and then I'm going to mix up the epoxy, which I will neither confirm or deny adding extra hardener to, and then I have no idea how to clamp these, so I'm just going to hold them together until the epoxy sets up. <laughs> 